Hi, welcome to Laura's View in Tarot 2. I am so glad you're here. Today's date is Sunday, February 4th, 2024. I have with me today someone I consider a friend and who is one of the moderators of this channel, Tess Castro. Tess had an encounter back in October that she shared with me and I found very interesting, but at the time I couldn't think of some way to um, use it within the game plan I have for my channel here at Laura's View in Tarot 2. And last night she posed a question, asked if I would ask the universe, and it does regard her encounter in October. And I thought, finally, a way to do this. I'm happy to do it. So I'd like to give Tess Castro a chance to share a story of a real experience she personally had and can tell you about in detail. And then we're going to pose a question to the universe about that encounter and a big hearted concern that she has and wants to know about. Hi, Tess. Welcome. Hi. How are you, Laura? Hello, everyone. Doing great. So back in October, you had an interesting experience. Just tell it the way you want to tell it, okay? Yeah, one afternoon, I was going into an establishment to order something to eat. Uh, it's the type of place, like a deli with tables. And uh, you go in, and there's a little bit of a line. You go through, you place your order, you move down toward the cashier. If you want to sit, they'll bring you your food. If you want to wait to take it to go, you just mull around till it's ready. And I noticed a friend of mine was working on the line behind the counter. And I realized, oh, this is your second job. I'm thinking to myself, because I didn't realize they worked there. And so I placed the order with so someone and then I put, got their attention and waved hello. And I was just getting a sandwich and fries. I didn't want to sit and eat. I was going to take it to leave. So I just... We exchanged a few pleasantries, but I understood that, you know, they were working. And I couldn't do too much. I just hung out waiting for when my time came to pay the cashier. And all of a sudden, after a few minutes, uh, this person that I'm familiar with started to shapeshift. And I, right away, I saw something different I wasn't accustomed to, but I didn't know if they were aware of what was going on because... I could tell by the movements, there was a small freeze in that body movement. And I just said, hey, your slip is showing. Because I grew up in Catholic school, and that was what you would say to somebody if something wasn't right. And something really wasn't right right here. Um, so they realized something was wrong. They bent down and stood up and were right back to what would have been considered normal. But as I started to walk closer to that end of the counter to see what was what was that, what what just happened, they said, after you get your food, I'll talk to you outside. So it was my signal to say nothing and move along because there were other people waiting for their food. And I knew what I saw and I just took it for granted that I better be able to step over here and do what I have to do to get out of the situation because I was that much of a, a, a shock luckily my food was prepared and i was able to buy it and exit the store i just waited around the side and i was so nervous i had to have a cigarette and within a few minutes the, my friend came out saying that they were almost getting off their shift uh if i wanted i could get, imagine this i could get a ride to wherever i was headed because they had to leave and i said yeah we gotta talk what what, what was that so that's the basic just of how it happened. What had happened was that this person shared with me that they are a hybrid. They have usually total control. They are not used to the sudden shifts, uh, the way it was explained in frequency, and it gets away from them sometimes. So uh, that's, that's the, the beginning of my change in relationship with this person that I wanted to share with you, Laura. And I'm realizing that this may happen to other people because of the frequency raising. Other people might suddenly not be able to control this, uh, you know, this, this look that they have when they are presenting as someone. Yeah. Now, I want to be clear. This is someone you have known as up until that point in time, you've known for 15 years. 
um, casually as just, you know, someone in your town. Uh, just, someone that uh, we, we travel in the same circles. We have mutual friends. We're friends on social media. We've been to parties and events and things together. And uh, it's just not a, a, a weekly thing. I would run across them at least eight times a year. And uh, quite often for several hours, it's someone that knows where I live. I know where they live, uh, lived. And, and, you know, we know each other's uh, companions. We know each other's friends. And it's just, it's not a, this is not something that I imagined because we had a discussion at length on uh, two occasions, at least. Actually, there would have been three, but I've been busy house hunting and they're actually relocating out of the area uh, recently. So we haven't been together as much since the new year, but uh, still, still friendly. And, and yeah, it's, it's a definite person. It's not so, so it was someone you knew. And because I imagine this is going to happen to a lot of people that are watching my channel because we're actively seeking to raise our vibration and that of the world. And I got in one of my reads a few months back that it's this, these slips are there. I, I call it camouflage. Um, you know, that their preferred human exterior are going to happen more and more often, not just because of the higher vibration of people around them, but because the earth has, you know, the uh, human resonance indicates that there's been a raising of vibration. So it's going to get more and more commonplace. And I think that uh, your experience is kind of a just a really good example for people to realize that you can see a slip like that and maybe not be surprised if it ends up being someone you've known for a long time that has those slips and, uh, um, you know, handle it with the grace and love. So uh, tell us a little more about in your conversations, this person I hear some people don't know they're a hybrid. So this person knew they were a hybrid all along. And were there other family members that are hybrids too? Actually, there's three siblings and the mother and one of the other siblings. And the mother was aware, but she's she's regular Earth Terran. She's a Terran. Um, she may have had an abduction experience when she was pregnant with uh, my friend. And uh, that could lead to the fact that by the age of nine, the mother actually explained to her that her and her sister have different fathers. Um, there was, she has not met her actual father. So I'm assuming that's because it was not a Terran. And uh, she was saying that usually it happens before puberty because some other people in her family must have knowledge. They did explain that it can happen a little later, but usually it's before puberty. So she's known about it. It sounds almost like the, the family's been kind of known to be accepting of this information and raising hybrids in their midst, doesn't it? I believe there's. she's not the only one, true. I do yeah. believe she's not the only one. And she's she's a little impressed with me that I took it so well. She said there's only three people in her life that she's been able to share this with, and I was the third. So that's a pretty lonesome life to be in your late 20s, and you're not able to really totally disclose what you're going through. And it's this is also a new period for her because she's never had it come a, come over her that that without warning. She said that's... She thinks it's because of the newer vibration. Yeah, of yeah, that would be unsettling. And especially if it's been impressed upon the uh, the people that are knowingly hybrid, because I understand there's some people that maybe great grandfather was, you know, <laughs> that aren't even aware that they have a small amount of genetic material that is non-human um, in their midst. And uh, yeah, so the, the fear of people's reactions yeah. It's got to be absolutely huge. And, you know, what I talk about with people is that everybody deserves some common courtesy and kindness. And we all need love, no matter who we are, where okay. we are, or even what we are. And uh, to judge by actions, you know, not lineage. <clears throat> 
So, and I think it's because we're coming to a time where we're going to be aware of the fact that we share this planet with lots of other or a mix of other types of races. And we need to be aware and kind of, if, if you kind of get your mind wrapped around, how would I want to react? How would I be proud of how I reacted if I was in this situation? It's going to help that be what you actually do in the situation. Now, let's move on to the question you wanted me to ask the cards, because I thought it was very loving and very beautiful. What was that? Well, because I see that they are relocating to another area, I suspect that they just have so many people they know for a long time up here. In, I'm in Connecticut that um, I'm wondering if this is going to happen across the board. Are a lot of these hybrids going to want to go into relocating to somewhere else just to delay the the knowledge coming out or maybe just to make it easier for themselves because there's so much explaining to do with people that you know in great numbers that if you relocate somewhere you don't know anyone there's a lot less to to that you're you know involved and and less people to find out either for a job or for uh you know relationships with people um I, I think I just worded it as simply as I could. I just was curious if if this is going to be a trend that... Uh, yeah. If uh, if people that are knowingly hybrid are going to feel almost forced to relocate um, yeah. until such time as, you know, this is commonly accepted and uh, they don't have to fear people's reactions as much. So let's get some insights and information uh, about what what's if this and any other information let me stop stop babbling because i got downloads going on here i'm gonna be very clear i'd like to have information from the universe about on this timeline are we going to see are people that are hybrid going to have to become more nomadic until such time as their status is kind of commonplace and accepted and other insights and information so this is almost like a reading for those of, that might be watching this that are hybrid. And it's informative for us who aren't, who uh, want the best possible outcome for everybody that is in service to others, no matter who or what they are. Okay, I'll switch the camera and we'll let the cards inform us about what are we going to see? What can we expect as far as um, <clears throat> nomadic or other possibilities for those that are hybrid amongst us? Insights and information. We know of one family that is relocating and it's quite possible that it's because that uh, non-hybrids among them are, are kind of aware of their situation. Is this going to be um, more commonplace that they're going to feel like they have to do that? This is one card, so I'm going to consider it may have been, a, you know, jump out and it's a three of wands which is talking about going somewhere new uh new path in a new way so yeah she's moving definitely i'm gonna put that back in it may still show up in the read i often have the jumpers show up even though i manipulate the cards and and get them really well mixed up if it's uh, truly an important aspect of what the universe is trying to convey it may show up again in the reading I'll do this like I do in the video. I'll go ahead and announce the cards and talk a little bit about them too. So we have the Nine of Pentacles, the, another Nine, the Nine of Swords, Judgment. We have the uh, Six of Wands, the Star. It's looking good for them. <laughs> Look at all these uh, major arcanas. Wow, strength. And the Hierophant, wow. four out of seven cards are major arcanas. Okay, so the situation here, the nine of pentacles is often a card. First of all, it's a strong uh, feminine energy. And the person uh, that you knew um, did have a human 
uh, feminine aspect. Um, and you shared with me, and I'd like you to, to just take a second and say kind of what you saw in the shift, because that was interesting. Yeah, uh, it was a little un startling to me because it went from a female uh, person that is familiar to me to a male person of a totally different uh, ethnicity and uh, a little shorter and a little heavier and older. I don't know if I mentioned that to you, Laura. It would look like a person in their late 40s. And I discussed that and I uh, was told that, uh, you know, the reply I got was that actually uh, she was an older soul and preferred to present as a younger female. And uh, that's what she works harder at. Um, okay. All right. So we have the, uh, now this is a card of some independence. And just, I can tell you just from this card alone, this person, uh, uh, we have nothing to fear from this person or, you know, relatives of same, nothing at all. Absolutely. Just very loving, um, generous nature. Absolutely. Something else telling me, not only do we not have anything to fear, but the, the fears that maybe kind of have prompted the relocation for the family, they don't have nearly as much to fear as they think they do. Now, in the past, they faced a lot of trials, tribulation, and if they came forth, um, and their hybrid status was known, they were, you know, considered to be, you know, devil spawn and unclean and everything else. And so it's with good reason that it's become kind of the, the norm to hide the status and not to be um, sharing with Terrans or humans, like you said, that, you know, that there's a hybrid uh, aspect to their, their being. But the times are changing, and they're going to be we're coming, this is the current. So the current victory, they can have less fear about being open and honest about, and I think that's, it's gonna help too, just with um, within our human population, where we have so many mixed race people. This is just an extension of that. And people are going to be, I think, a little more open and accepting than, now I'm not talking about, you know, the religious fanatics and what have you, they're, that are programmed to, uh, respond violently but the acceptance is is going to be faster and broader than they hope again not as much for them to worry about as they think they do now let's look forward another beautiful card the star card here card of success and love and just and this card is because this person in this star card is absolutely unashamed of their body they're here naked and not even worried about it, unconcerned. They're going to come to a place where they don't have to be as concerned about what their aspects are. Not at all. That They can be accepted and loved and uh, incorporated within societal structures, you know, even admitting that, well, yeah, I've got some this or that in my bloodline. And uh, the strength card shows up for a little bit more. Just a beautiful uh, affirmation that... There's infinite love and opportunity here to uh, to be part of more than one culture, more than one ethnicity, more than one race. Absolutely. Now, the Hierophant, I think, is telling us a little more. It's not as dominant as this one, but we do need to be aware, again, as I said, there are people that are still heavily programmed that are going to react. So their concern and the things they suffered in the past aren't as much of an issue, but still something to be mindful of. All of us have that. There's things in our past that we just know, oh, my neighbor is too straight laced to ever tell them I used to do this or, you know, whatever. So right. discretion is still going to need to be part and parcel of what they do, but not with as much fear. And I don't think, well, I think there will be some, it's kind of like, well, I'm going to wait till someone else comes forward and discloses all this. That's not my path. There may be some nomadic aspects to their life because they don't want to be in that group of, you know, first wave disclosures. Um, but it's not going to be a huge, huge issue. Let's get two more cards because this is fascinating. And just the fact that we have one, two, three, four, and all of those major arcanas, the three of them in the future. Um, got the one that's a little bit cautionary. Again, it's always good to use discretion. But uh, it's looking really good. Another one, the Emperor. And then the five of swords. So the emperor, 
uh, just infinite wisdom, absolutely infinite wisdom indicated here. So they'll use their wisdom and disclose their truth. It'll, it'll become more commonplace. And any struggles that they have as a result of the non-acceptance of their lineage, um, those are going to be kind of temporary in nature, real, but not, not that severe and long-lasting. So I don't think they have to worry about maybe the level of persecution or um, judgment, um, you know, pre predetermined judgment that they may have had to in the past. So, and again, we need to have hearts because as we are raising our vibration, we're going to come and contact people. We're going to discover people like you did that we've known for years and had no idea. And we're going to be the catalyst for that because it's our vibration that their camouflage is weakening under. So have a heart, guys. If someone shows you reptile eyes, but you know they're a decent person, <laughs> those reptile eyes might have shown up just because of you and your big heart. So uh, have a heart. Awesome. Yeah, compassion. It's all yeah, about that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, again, you know, judging by actions, you know, judging by, yeah, actions. So uh, I, I do intend to kind of touch on a different aspect of this topic in another video that has nothing to do with someone coming forward and saying, here's what I saw. And this is someone I knew strictly as human up until this point, you know, um, but it, it does, it kind of raises a whole new conversation that I think we ought to be having because it's going to become more and more just an accepted part of our life that, uh, again, that we're a mix of not just races of color, but races of beings quite often, maybe totally unaware, you know, totally unaware. I know people that have uh, sent off to uh, <clears throat> have their DNA tested and they're surprised. I had no idea I had Eastern European. I had no idea. And I also have heard that there's some people get back with there's some unknown aspects to their DNA. And that's when uh, what they're not being told <laughs> is that that is you know, non-human. And it just may just be two, three percent, you know. So I think we have to accept that it's going to be something that a lot of us are going to discover about ourselves if we didn't already know. But in this case, your friend already knew and uh, was just, uh, my concern is with the relocation to have their camouflage be secure. It's more secure around lower vibration. And lower vibration, to me, that's not love and light. That's high crime. You know, that's the kind of, that. The, that's where if they did slip in that environment, that they'd get those negative reactions and stuff. So I, I'd almost rather have them just understand occasionally it's going to slip and you'll have to explain to someone, you know. Yeah, to. But be in a high vibration environment when it does. Yeah. So I, I'd almost kind of caution them, don't settle where you know you're never going to slip because yeah. that's going to be really lower vibration. And it's temporary because the whole earth is having a, a raising vibration anyway. So choose choose your high ground. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you looking at this for us, for me, especially dealing with having experienced it and others. If it happens to them, I'd like them to have compassion and just be open to listening. And, you know, like you said, it's nothing to, uh, they're just people, just like we're people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we can't help what our, you know, the DNA we inherit, our gene pool, we had, you know, we get what we get, but yeah. what we do with it, we're responsible for. Right. So that being said, I'm going to say that thank you very much for sharing your story and uh, giving me a very loving way to view a complicated topic, you know, because I thought that is the most loving question I've had anybody pose in so long. I'm happy to do it. And I wanted to do it maybe in a way we could share it with others and it's not just uh, privately with you, because since you're, you know, an acquaintance and a moderator and a friend of mine. So thank you for coming on. Thanks for the love and the light and everything bright that you send me and everyone else here. Thanks, Laura. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, it's all part of what we're doing here because it's uh, um, we're light warriors. <laughs> we are. We're going to spread it and uh, have a good time and fun in the process. So that being said, thank you, Tess. And until next time.
love and light and everything bright to each and every one of you. If you're willing to accept it, it's yours.